My Lords, it's a great pleasure to follow those wise and judicious speeches by my noble friends, Lord Scudlad and Dunlop. And it's a great pleasure to be able uh, to congratulate my noble friend, uh, Baroness Fraser of Craig Maddy, on securing and on phrasing this motion as she did, uh, looking not only at the balance sheet, not only at the economic contribution that Scotland makes to these islands, but to the well-being of its peoples. Uh, I think we, we often miss that in these debates. Uh, patriotism is not reckoned in tally sticks. As my noble friend uh, Baroness Davidson of London Lynx points out, it's a terrible mistake to look only at block grants and at, at bottom lines and try and assess uh, nationality in numbers. We should take a moment in this chamber, my lords, to celebrate all of the contributions that Scotland makes to the well-being of the human race. I can't think of any similarly sized territory that has contributed more to the happiness of mankind proportionate to its population. Let's think of all the things that Scotland has given us. Steam engines, television, uh, telephones, uh, daily disposable contact lenses, golf, uh, toasters, cash machines, and not least, my lords, the United Kingdom. Uh, we can very easily forget that uh, Great Britain and then after it the United Kingdom were largely Scottish creations. One of the oddities of the age in which we live is that people are determined to see everything through uh, an imagined prism of hierarchy and oppression. And so everything is squashed into this, this pyramid of, uh, uh, of greater or lesser victimhood. And this has given rise to this, this slightly brave heart view that in some way the, the smaller part of the, the smaller of the two nations must somehow have been annexed or colonized in some way. That would have been, I think, quite a shock uh, to people in England at the time first of the Union of Crowns and then of the Acts of Union. If you look at the, uh, the response south of the border when James VI uh, was making his procession. There was a, a general fear that swarms of landless lairds were going to descend on England and snap up all the sinecures and titles. Uh, it was the English Parliament that denied uh, His Majesty the title of King of Great Britain that he so craved and that continued uh, to deny the claims of his son. I occasionally go and look at the ceiling in the banqueting hall along Whitehall. Since I was last there, they put these bean bags in, so you, you no longer have to crane your head in quite the same way. And there's a, there's a wonderful celebration there, iconographically, of, of the Union. Uh, uh, England and Scotland are shown as, as great fleshy Rubens-esque uh, ladies uh, coming together and bestowing uh, the crown on young, on the, the, the baby Charles I as Prince of Wales, while the weapons of war are consigned to a furnace. Now, in a funny kind of way, the Stuarts did create a sense of shared Britishness, although not in the way that they'd intended. The, uh, the shared nationality came out of a, a common opposition to that dynasty. And it's very striking when you look at what was happening during the Wars of the Three Kingdoms that people were not uh, uh, ar arraying themselves as English or Scottish. They were, they were making alliances across the border as Royalists or Puritans with Presbyterians or whatever it was. And, and in the end, uh, I suppose, it was almost intrinsic in the design of that ceiling, uh, that Rubens ceiling, for which Charles I paid the almost astronomical price in those days of £3,000. It looked a bit foreign, and the Stuarts felt a bit foreign. And in a shared opposition to this rather uh, uh, transalpine school of art that was thought to influence the thinking of the dynasty, a common Britishness was forged, resting on shared language, on shared manners, and shared beliefs. Again, when the Acts of Union went through, it, of course, people are change-resistant, parliaments are change-resistant, a certain amount of cajolery was needed on both sides of the border in order to get the legislation through. For some reason, that cajolery was remembered and resented in Scotland, but has been almost completely forgotten in England. But had there been a referendum, I'm pretty sure it would have gone against in England. Luckily, the Acts of Union went through, and as Adam Smith pointed out, having lived through it, the removal of that border opened the door to uh, a, a united Great Britain rising above the run of nations. It no longer needed to fret about internal borders or internal turmoil. It could concentrate on uh, the rest of the world. And in doing so, I think it lifted <clears throat> the well-being, not just of people in 
this archipelago, but of peoples elsewhere, as a family, as uh, peoples with community of interest, with shared affinities that go well beyond simply geographical proximity. It's a relationship I sometimes think uh, incarnated by that between Boswell and Johnson. It was teasing, it was occasionally joshing, but it was fundamentally deeply affectionate. And we would barely, uh, uh, neither of those men would have reached uh, the heights of fame that they now attain without the participation of the other. So a relationship, I think, sometimes summarized by, it's a possibly apocryphal story, but it's such a good story, of the, the Highlander at Dunkirk, who, observing the total rout on the beaches, tells his sergeant, you know, if the English give in too, this could be a long war. And in that spirit, I think we see something of our shared national outlook, uh, resting as it does on character, on what James VI and I called similitude of manners. Uh, it, it was that, if you like, bridling at injustice, that uh, slowness to anger but resolution when roused, that led the peoples of these islands together uh, on the great endeavours of ending slavery, of uh, spreading law and justice around the world, of saving Europe first from Bonapartist tyranny, then from fascism, and then playing a brave role in saving it uh, from Stalinist tyranny. These were achievements of a common people, resting not just on proximity, but on real affinities of outlook. And we've only just got started. My Lords, I'm grateful to the Baroness Fraser for initiating this debate. Uh, on the contribution that 